Cucumber Utilities. We are going to extend our Cucumber Utility library to support running multiple rows rather than just single rows. So we all know that our current code to read the information from Cucumber's data table library has this method, which is nothing but a get cell value method, and we're just passing in the column name and we are getting the column value out from the data collection. So that's kind of uh, a very, very normal functions or situation where we just assume that there is only one row and we are reading the column value while we pass the column name. That's fine. But you can see we have a to do and it tells us that passing the row index to get the column value based on the row number. So it was not done. And there were some questions from people that we need to have this library as well as a part of our framework. So I have added that as well. And as you can see, the code is going to turn into something like this. As you can see, this method is going to be get cell value with row index. So here we're not just passing the column name, but also the row number. And also you can see that this time I'm using the arrow function in the for each. And since we have upgraded our Java from 1.5 to Java 9, this is really, really cool to see there are so many new features available in Java as like C sharp, like an arrow functions and things of that nature. So we're just trying to iterate through the uh, column name and the row number, and then we are going to get the column value out from it. So that's very, very simple code. So once you do that, your code is going to be looking much easier and simpler to work with multiple rows of a data table. So let's quickly start working then and understand how things work. So for that, I'm going to flip to IntelliJ. So as I said before, this particular method that we have, the get cell value, is going to work very well with our Discord that we can see there is only one row for each and every table that we have. So what if we need to have uh, multiple rows and we have to pass that information as a as a value or something like that? So there is no such situation in our code as of now. Uh, but let's say I'm just going to add something like this. And I'm going to say the salary as 5,000 and uh, the duration, let's say 40, something like that, right? Uh, I'm just going to save it. So this is going to be auto user 2. Control Shift L to format that uh, table. All right. So if you try to run the particular code, this is going to throw us an error. The reason is because we only have one library, which is just going to handle with only one rows as an hard coded way, right? So in order to overcome this situation, I am going to write one more method this time. And the method is going to be public static string of get cell value with row index. So we're going to say string column name, and it's going to be in row number. All right. And then here, I'm just going to use a final of string and you'll understand why I'm doing that. Uh, so I'm just going to create a variable called column value. And then I'm just going to pass now. There we go. And then we have to make use of our data collection uh, variable. But the thing is, for data collection variable, we are actually going to make use of, uh, instead of dictionary, we have like dictionary of string of data collection. I'm just going to replace this to use list of data collections. So uh, this time there is going to be a small change here. So I'm just going to use list and you'll understand why, because it makes use of uh, generic collections and all those stuff. So I'm just going to make use of that. And once we use this as a list, we can make use of uh, array list. We don't really have to pass the type in here. So I'm just going to leave it as it is for now. But for list, we don't, we cannot use the put method. Instead, we, we need to use the add method. And here, instead of uh, dictionary return, I'm just going to make use of our list. And let's remove this string again. Right? So simply it is. Uh, and once again, because I'm just going to make use of the dictionary collection in many places. So I'm just going to make use of the data collection. It's going to be cleared. Uh, right. Just going to save that. And you can see that I'm quickly running through this one, uh, not doing a lot of things here. The reason is because 
This code is pretty straightforward. We know how this convert data table to dictionary works. In our previous videos, we have already discussed about it. But just that this time, what will happen is, since this convert data table to dictionary is going to also store the row numbers, we are going to store the row numbers as well. So uh, you can see that we have already created a placeholder for the data collection with the row numbers, but we have actually uh, not used that efficiently while we store that. So I'm actually going to make use of our row number, the new data collection. So basically this is going to be something like this. As you can see here, it is going to have a row number and new of data collection of uh, data dot get of zero and then uh, get of column index. That's exactly the same thing that we have used and row number. So instead of the older code that we had to store hard coded value, we are going to store the row number this time so that we can make use of multiple rows to be stored within this particular collection, right? So that's the another change that is going to happen within our uh, method. And finally, we are going to make use of our uh, get cell value because it also has changed so basically i can either use this method or i can completely deprecate this method so i'm just going to remove this completely this time and insert we're going to force our complete test to use this new method so i'm just going to say uh, for each so this time i'm going to make use of the error function there we go so i'm just going to iterate and i'm going to say that if x dot column name is equal to the column name that I'm passing in as a parameter and the row number is equal to the row number that I'm passing in then return me the column value so you cannot directly use the return keyword here that's why uh, I'm doing something crazy here to return the values out from an error function. And then you need to use the return of column value. So as you can see, we have deprecated the uh, older method with get cell value. And now we are forcing everybody to use get cell value, the row index. So we can unify or streamline the process instead of having two different methods. So again, it's going to be 2018. And now if I try to build this particular code, there is going to be a lot of errors. The reason is because we don't really have the method that we're looking for. So there we go. That's fine. This, that was expected. So, so how to call this particular method? That's another question because we are going to make use of a new change here. So we have to somehow call this particular uh, method, get so cell value with row index right so i have to pass the particular row number as well so how to make use of that that we're going to discuss in our next video